now, this one might fall under personal preferences as far as your user interface is set up. And again, we'll get to custom UI later. But I personally like to have these document menus open and have uh, quick access to say uh, settings over here and my tool menus over here. And I will use a custom menu. One custom menu you can access right now is just hold down spacebar and there's like a little custom menu you can use. And if you want to be one with ZBrush, you can hit the tab key and that'll actually get rid of all this extraneous information. And you can just close these document menus and make, go to document new and fill all of this with your custom interface and just work very minimalist. But while I'm doing demos and stuff, we usually have a decent amount of info available to us with these little docking stations. And again, you can just hit tab to bring your interface back. Now we've already talked about the basics of menus. You can click and drag in this empty area over here. You can dock new menus over here so we can say, you know, give me my brush menu back and just click and drag that white dot and drag it over here to the left. And again, click and drag in these gray areas to navigate your menus. Hold down shift to open up multiple menus and then just tap those sub menus to close them. Now one thing I do want to point out, and this is going to be extra obvious when you get into custom menus, is a lot of these menus are context sensitive. So right now I have a dog selected. I can drag this out of my canvas, go into edit mode, and it's a poly mesh 3D. We'll get more into that later, but essentially this means this is a polygonal object and I can go through here and I got a lot of tool options available to me. However, if I switch over here to one of these assets like the cone 3D, that's a primitive and you're going to see my menu got a lot shorter. There's only so many things I can do with a primitive object. And in fact, if I go down here to Z-Sphere, I get another round of menus. There's only so many things I can do with a Z-Sphere. They're different than primitives and they're different than a poly mesh object. So just be aware that some of your menus may change or menu options may change depending on what type of object you have selected. And speaking of submenus, if you go down here to say the tool menu and then we say subtool submenu, there's actually even more submenus in there. So subtool and then split. So there's going to be nested some menus in some instances. And again, you just click and drag through here and then just click these menus again to collapse them. And this may look a little intimidating. We got subtool here, we got geometry here, and it's getting crazy. Don't worry, I'm going to walk you through every single bit of this. And then eventually, once you get comfortable, you, again, you'll be able to make your own custom marking menu and have the access to things that you use all the time. It'll be fun, I promise. We just have to get there. And another thing, too is on the left hand side here. Uh, if we want to get rid of some of these menus, let's click this document, we can get rid of this. And let's say we want to talk about brush and then stroke. So we're going to say, say uh, drag that white dot over here and we have brush and stroke available to us and they're both open. There's a little bit of a weird thing that happens in ZBrush by default and that's if I close these menus down just by clicking this main menu and closing it, you're going to see when I go through and click on brush, stroke's going to collapse. I click on stroke, brush is going to collapse. That's kind of interesting default behavior and event like if you're going to stack a bunch of menus over here on the left hand side, that may be desirable. I just want you to be aware of why that's happening and it doesn't happen over here. So if I take the render menu and drag it over here and over my tool, I can close the render, I can close tool, and then I can open both of these up no problem. Let's go ahead and click this white dot over here. So the reason it happens over here is underneath your preferences, interface, palettes menu, you're going to see left tray is highlighted. If you over, hover over that, you're going to see left tray auto collapse. That just means that in your left tray, those are going to be auto collapsing menus. Now that behavior isn't necessarily going to happen if you drag in a new menu. So again, if we close out that stroke menu and then take the stroke menu and drag it over here, they're both going to be open, no problem. But if you do happen to collapse, collapse these main menus here, just be aware that's the behavior you're going to get. If you don't want that behavior, just go in here to preferences, turn off left tray, say store config, and every time you open up ZBrush, your left tray will behave just like your right tray. Now along that same line, if we go back in here to preferences, you're also going to see one open sub palette is on. And that means when I'm over here, and I'm in geometry, and I'm in subtool here. So again, we have our tool menu open over here on the right hand side. And if I open up subtool, it's going to open up my subtool menus. If I open up geometry, it's going to collapse my subtool menu. If you want to override that behavior, you can go over here and just hold down shift. So I'll hold down shift and open these menus and then they'll all stay open. And then I can go through here manually and collapse those. If you don't feel like holding down shift, that's just another preference in here. You can just turn that off, store your config, and now you don't have to hold down shift to open up multiple menus. But I generally leave that alone and just remember to hold down shift.